Switch expressions are often overlooked in C-sharp since they're a newer feature, but when used correctly, they can be a powerful tool for simplifying your code. Let's look at how they work in this 10-minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So here I have some pre-written code for us to get us started, and this is code you might write. Um, so we've got an integer, this is a console application, by the way, .NET 9, not that it really matters, you can do this in previous versions of .NET for a ways, but we have a number grid. So let's just say you went to school and you got an 85 on a test, and you wanna translate that over to a report card or to write on a paper, what's the letter grade for that? Now I've got a simple grading scale here, um, 90 or above is an A, 80 or, or 80 to 90 or 89 would be a B, 70 is C, 60 is a D, and anything else is an F. So this is how we would, you know, assign that letter grade in C sharp. So we'd say, okay, you know, let's do an if statement and else if and else if and else if and our final else. But we have a better way of doing this now with switch expressions. So a switch expression is going to look like this. Let's take that same letter grade and we're going to say um, equals number grade switch. I'm going to open like curly braces and start on a new line. So what I've done here is it's not a switch statement that's different. This is a switch expression. So the switch expression is going to assign a value. So it's going to put a value in this case into the letter grade variable. So what, what value do I want? Well, I'm going to start with if it's greater than let's get our cursor right spot here, greater than or equal to, I'm not sure why it's, there we go, uh, greater than or equal to 90, I want to say equals arrow for the fat arrow. And I'm gonna say A. And then I do it again and say greater than or equal to, because this is gonna fall down. So if this one meets the criteria, it's gonna do this and be done. But if not, it's gonna to go to the next one down and we're gonna say um, 80 and we're gonna say arrow and we'll say B. We'll do the same thing for 70. And again, the fat arrow, we're gonna say C. And then we're going to say 60 and say D. It's finally getting the, the pattern here. And then we're gonna say, well, anything else, which is a discard character. And then the arrow, we're gonna say F. So this is our switch expression. This code right here replaces all of this code right here. So you can do a lot in here and they don't have to be this simple, but notice we're doing comparisons here. If we're familiar with switch statements, we have very specific things we can do, say, hey, if it's 90, then do this. Uh, whereas this, we have a lot more freedom to say, hey, if it's greater than or equal to 90, more of an if statement type comparator. And we can then do our assignments on the right, which this A then goes into letter grade. So this switch expression puts the value into letter grade the same way that all of these if statements do. And again, a lot cleaner. So instead of all that work, we have just this work. Now let's get a little bit more complicated here. So we're gonna scroll down. I've got another example. And to understand this example, we have to go to the bottom first because I have down here some declarations. So I have a, an interface. This is very much a demo code. You have an interface that has nothing in it, which is valid C sharp. And there are times when it makes sense to do this. So I have an I animal. And it's empty, there's, an, a, there's no properties associated with it. This is gonna allow me to put multiple different types of animals into a list without inheritance, it's just interfaces. So I have three records here, a dog, a cat, and a cow. So dogs get names, cats get a title and a name because of course they're cats, and then cows just get a breed. So in all of these implement the interface I animal. 
which of course is empty, so there's not much to implement. So with that, what I have done up here is I create a new list of I animal. So I can put a dog, a cat, and a cow into this list, which is what I've done. So we've got Fred, we've got Princess Donut, and we've got a Longhorn for our three types. So now I want to put in a message here, something from each of these animals. So I'm going to do a for each here and loop over the animals. I'm going to say, if A is dog, and I'm assigning to the variable D, um, which is a newer thing in C sharp that allows me to do an assignment right there, kind of cast it into a new variable. I can say dog D dot name, but if it's cat and I cast it a C, well, then I can say C dot title C dot name. And if it's a cow, I can say cow dot breed. So and otherwise I can say unknown animal, but we can do better than this. We can make it a little bit more clear and cleaner if we write a switch expression. So we'll do the same for each. And we're going to say A in animals. And in here, and I'll copy and paste this because it's, um, it's easier than trying to watch me just type. But this is the switch expression that's the equivalent of all of this. So what is this? If dog D, then dog and D dot name. If cat C, then cat and C dot title dash C dot name. And then if it's cow, then cow, cow dot breed. And if it's anything else, there's a discard character, meaning an else for anything else, unknown animal. We put that into that same message that we're doing here multiple times. So again, all of this code as compared to this code, a lot cleaner, a lot more compact. Now, again, I am not a person that just says, hey, more compact code means better code because you still want to be readable. And you still want to understand, but I think this is very understandable. Now, yes, you can throw lots of um, different symbols into this and it can make things less straightforward. It can make it more confusing. And I would encourage you to rethink that if that's what you're doing, maybe take a step back or maybe even revert back to the if method. You don't have to do a switch expression just because a switch expression allows you to do something. You can say, in this case, I think the if else if pattern is more readable. Totally understandable, totally acceptable. So make sure that you don't just say, this isn't, you know, a cult. You don't have to, you know, sign your life over to the switch expression cult. You get to choose this as another tool in the toolbox. It makes sense in a lot of cases, especially for something like this makes a lot of sense because it's just so simple and clean. This is fairly simple and clean as well. Yes, there's a bit more going on with the uh, the casting, but it's still fairly clean. And really, I don't think the if else if makes it any simpler because we're still doing the casting as well. So it's just a lot more noise and not a lot of added value. So switch expressions, when you find a need for them, they're there. And I would say, I encourage you, don't just force it, but they are a really helpful tool to have in your toolbox to make your code simpler and cleaner and yet still be as understandable, if not more understandable as it's written. Okay, so that's it. Try them out. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.